Good morning. Good morning, good morning. There we go. My comments weren't showing up. Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Um, I'm just excited. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Welcome. I feel like I should start singing um, good morning to you. <laughs> good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning to you. Um, singing is not my thing. Good morning, good morning, Demi. Hey, Bond. Hey, Rose. See y'all coming in. Good morning, Ink for Life. Good morning to you guys. Welcome, welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Lakeisha this morning. I'm excited to be here. We've been dealing with, um, last week we dealt with um, some biblical untruths that we've been holding to truth. And this morning we're gonna do this again. My teacher says, be still and know that I'm God. It was blamed out by the great Dina Patterson at DPW Serenity. If you need something blamed, she is the person for you. She has done all my blame. Uh, my cup, so let me tell you something. Somebody sent me a cup. And if you don't know, I am I, I co collect coffee mugs. It is my thing. I have a cabinet dedicated just to my coffee mugs. And this is so sweet. Um, everybody knows I, I have this saying that I say, it's kingdom, baby. And someone sent me a cup that said, it's kingdom, <laughs> baby. So I was super excited. I got this cup a few weeks ago and I forgot about it. Um, Cause I try not to reuse a cup for a while. Like I go through all my different cups. That's why sometimes you guys won't see me repeat cups. I'm always looking for new cups. Um, and so it's Kingdom Baby came in the mail. So whoever sent it, they didn't indicate who they were. Thank you and many blessings on you for sewing into my cup ministry. Oh, I love it. And I was really excited. Let's pray. Do me a favor. Go share the video now, right now. I, did, I talked in church about social media and the gospel. We spend about six hours a day on social media. Um, if we equate that in the lifetime, that's going to be about five hours. Probably most of you don't even realize how much time you're wasting on social media. You can actually check in your phone, in your settings, and it'll show you how much time you're actually wasting on social media. Um, you And God even wants us to be a good steward of our time. So if we're going to be on social media, let's make the most of our time. Let's share. Let's put the gospel. Let's make it go crazy for Christ. It's not going crazy for LMJ. It's going crazy for Christ. God has given us these avenues, even though Facebook probably was started for something else. God has flipped the script on that and given us these avenues for us to share the gospel of Christ, for us to share a word, not for us to be selfish, not for us just to be into ourselves, but for us to share the gospel of Christ. I smile, my baby is on Instagram. I'm not YouTube live this morning. I've been having some problems with YouTube. I'm only Facebook and Instagram live. Hey, glory girl, mama loves you. Um, so let us share the gospel of Christ. If you can share a messy video, and I'm not fussing, if you can talk about where you were at last night, how much fun you had, then take the opportunity and chance this morning 
and share the gospel of Christ. You don't know who's watching page. You don't know who's not saved, who needs to get saved. And we just need to make, we need, it, we need to be about kingdom, baby. We need to put it out there for Christ. So go share the video live, go tag someone in it and let them experience the gospel to, through you. That's your credit in kingdom. Um, Friday night, I went and spoke to 80 young ladies and one of the young ladies came up for salvation. I said, you're not saved? She said, I'm not sure. So we don't even know if people around us are sure about their salvation. And it's up to us to make sure that they're sure, that they sure that they understand kingdom and they understand their salvation, not religious and church. So let me pray and let us get started for today. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you rightly divide the word of God. We thank you for spirit. We thank you for truth, Lord God. We thank you for the real truth. We thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No demon, no devil in hell shall come near our dwelling. We plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, Lord God, and we thank you, Father God, for your word. Bless the people today, not let it fall on deaf ears. Let it be implanted in their hearts so that they can go out and walk out more for your kingdom alone and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my sight, of your sight, be, be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Holy Ghost, only go do what you can do in Jesus' name. I'm so excited. I am so excited about the word today. I was thinking about this, but this is called In All the Truth, In All the Truth. I want to talk to you a little bit about Matthew 7 and 1. It came up the other day when we were talking about um, the two or more because we've been using two or more wrong. We're the church. Um, we are responsible for our brothers and sisters in the church and how they live. And so it would only be acceptable because this, this is used so much that we talk about Matthew 7 and 1 and how we use it as a defense mechanism. And it's not a defense mechanism mechanism for our sins but anytime someone um corrects us or challenges us about our sin we like to use this scripture um when god is simply saying nah that's not what that scripture is saying so i'm going to read to you matthew 7 and 1 and then i'm going to talk to you about the fallacies that are associated with this because it's very important that there is some accountability to our lives period like you're not my my uncle taught yesterday it was so powerful. He talked he taught about poverty and having a poverty mindset and how it was less than kingdom and people are not living out kingdom principles. Talking about religion, when you talk about church, we talk about kingdom. There's a difference. A lot of us have been groomed and raised in religious ideology and church and we don't understand there is a kingdom currency by which we should live. And if we live according to kingdom currency, right, then we're gonna reap a harvest that's due to us in due season and due time. So let me read this to you. It says Matthew 7 and 1, it says, do not, and I'm reading out the New Living Translation, do not judge others and you will not be judged for you will, you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. I love, I love Jesus. Hypocrite. That's what he called him. First, get the rid, rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. And then I'm going to tell you about this next part, too, because it says don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls and turn around and attack you. Or the King James Version says don't cast your um, pearls before swine. Don't cast your pearls before swine. So let's talk about let's talk, talk about what hypocrisy is first. Hypocrisy is the is the practice of claiming to have a moral standard about something and you don't really live in that truth. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees here and what he was simply saying to them was, don't say anything to anyone about anything unless you living in that truth. 
And I taught something one time about mind your own business, M-Y-O-B, mind your own business. Don't, don't say anything. Like, don't say anything, you hypocrite, about anybody else unless you're living that truth. See, I have this thing that goes off in my head when somebody starts talking to me or giving me advice on something and I know they don't live according to it. In my head, my head is saying, um, so how do you deal with that? Like, how do you really live that truth out in your life? If you're not living that truth, don't give me no advice. Don't, don't give me no advice. Don't give me no advice until you're really living that truth because it makes it hypocritical. Don't hold me to a moral standard that you're not living. If you're not living that moral standard out, don't come give me all your scriptures. Don't come give me all your word. Don't tell me about your good dating practices, right? And you don't, and you don't hold these to be your truth in your dating. I mean, it's simple things. Don't tell me about my dress and you go look at pornography. Don't talk to me um, about all of these other things and you live contrary to that, that's what he was saying to them. You should only correct somebody when you live out the truth. Don't talk to me about cursing, right? You don't be cursing, you don't curse, and then you curse. Like that's what a hypocrite is. You're not living out the truth, but you wanna bring me some truth. No, bring me some truth when you live in that truth. Bring me some truth when you're applying those principles. Bring me some truth when that's what you're actually living out. Talk to me about your finances. Talk to me about not being in debt. Talk to me when you're really living out those principles. I have a philosophy. I only teach what I live. I only teach what I live. Like I only teach what I live. If I'm not living it or if I'm struggling through it, I'm going to be real with you. And I'm going to tell you, this is a struggle of mine. This is an area in which I am really fighting to get and to live like this is the pressure that I felt. These are the things that I've had to deal with, but only tell me something when it's really your truth. <laughs> like it's really your truth. That's why sometimes it's hard because sometimes we'll, we, and I don't know why we get degrees. I have degrees. And because we got a degree in something, we feel like we get to offer somebody some advice, but we ain't never lived it out. Right. We ain't never lived it out. I do business coaching. I only business coach in the areas in which I'm really comfortable, like social media marketing, um, like building your brand, like building your business. I don't sell you something I don't know how to do. I used to. I used to. When I first started out business coaching, I used to tell people I could do things because I wanted their business and I couldn't even do it. I really didn't have the skill set for it. I really didn't have the skill set for it. I really hadn't put it into practice. I really wasn't necessarily living by it. It's not enough for you to just have the information. It's not enough for you just to have the information. That's not enough. It's how are you applying it or how have you applied it in circumstance or situation. The application, the practice of it is what gives you the guarantee behind it. The practice of the word is what puts the guarantee behind it. So just coming to somebody, quoting some scriptures, telling them how they have, and you don't have practical application behind that, that's hypocrisy. If you ain't practicing, if you ain't doing it, if you ain't living it, if you ain't storing in it, that's when it becomes hypocrisy. It's if, well, tell, tell me how you do it. Tell me how you've done it. Tell me your experiences you've had behind it. When I'm dealing with a certain situation and I may not have been through it, I look for a friend, like even if it's somebody I know needs to connect to somebody, I look for a friend or someone who's been through it. And I'm like, this is somebody you probably need to tap into because that person has dealt with it and done it before. They've, dealt, they've done it before. The application is there. They tried it and failed. They built it and worked it out. Um, this is what they did. It's like people who have never been married and tried to give you advice about being married or people who have never raised kids and have tried to talk to you about raising kids, uh, somebody who's never raised a son, but wants to tell you about raising a son, and they've never really raised a boy at all, and don't understand the dynamics of how a boy functions. That's what hypocrisy is. It's not even your moral truth, but you're trying to hold me to this truth. You're trying to hold me to live by it, and you don't even live by it. 
That's why I changed even for me, and I don't know why I'm bringing this up. That's why I changed even for me the level of business coaching that I do. I coach in the areas that I'm the strongest. I coach in the places where the, I'm the strongest. I talk about the things in which I know I've done successful. I try to focus mainly on nonprofits and entrepreneurs with small businesses because those are the areas that I know I'm most successful. I'm not somewhere I ain't got no business being. I'm not teaching you the word of God that I'm not trying to live out. And if I'm struggling in the area, I'm going to be the first person to tell you, hey, I'm struggling in this area. And so that's what Jesus was saying to them. He was like, look, don't you talk about nothing to nobody. Don't you talk about nothing to nobody. And you're not living this. Don't you, you take that plank out your own eye before you judge or say something about the speck somebody has in their own eye. So he was cautioning them to look like chill out because the Pharisees and Sadducees were so pious and they were such in a position that they felt like because they had learned the word of God, they knew the scripture, they knew the law, that they could say well, absolutely anything that they could to somebody else. And he was like, no, it's not enough for you to learn the law. It's not enough for you to talk about the law. Bru let me see this law in motion. See, our, this generation of kids that we need to minister to, you're not going to be able to minister to this generation of kids and you're not living it. You're not going to be able to talk to them about sexual sin and you're not living it. You're not going to be able to talk to them. What They're going to challenge you. They're going to they gonna want to know, how is this working for you? How, how is this working? Or how did this not work for you? That's why we just need to get in a position and just say a whole lot of less, right? The Pharisees and Sadducees had a whole lot of man-made standards. They were not kingdom standards. They were not principal standards. They were not according to the word of God. And it's real easy to get in man-made standards and hold them to be our truth. And that's not even what the word says. Anytime somebody comes to me with advice, I really want them to align it with the word. And I'm not pious about it, but in my head, I'm like, show me that. Bring it to me in here. Show me what the word of God says, because there's a kingdom currency that we need to live by in order for us to reap the harvest that we're trying to reap from God. Show it to me. No, show, show me right here. Show me where the word tells you that that's the standard that I'm supposed to live by. If you can show it to me in the word, man, you a hundred. Well, we got to have practical common sense. You show me that in the word too. You, you show me that in the word too about this practical, worldly, man-made sense that we've been living by that has absolutely nothing to do with kingdom. And then don't search your spiritual authority and tell me that Jesus told you to do something. The Lord told you because it should bear witness if I'm not in rebellion. If I'm in rebellion, it's not going to bear witness. So this judgy not scripture has been our defense mechanism. We've used this judgy not defense scripture for our defense mechanism when we don't want nobody dealing with our, us about our sins. So if we don't want nobody dealing with us about our sins, then judgy not, 71 comes up, oh, judgy not, don't, don't judge me. Who are you to judge? Well, may not be that I'm here to judge, but here's what the word says about that. I can take you to a thing in the word, a passage in the word that says, hey, you're supposed to live like this. And I can show you I ain't living like this or I've fought not to live like this anymore. Or this is the thing that I'm working on with myself, but dealing with it from a place, from a place of humility and in love. We always supposed to correct people in humility of, of love. So if you committing the very sin, you don't get to approach people. If you live in contrary, if you ain't living in the things that you're trying to tell people, then that's hypocrisy and it makes you less effective. Like it makes you less effective. That's why the Lord tells us all the time to search our own heart or judge yourself. Like judge yourself so, so you won't be judged. That's what the scripture says. Galatians 6, 1 and 2 doesn't mean that we're not supposed to hold each other accountable. We're supposed to hold each other accountable according to the biblical and spiritual truths. It's how we hold each other accountable. It's if we're walking in that ourselves. So it says Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Brothers and sisters, if someone claiming is caught, is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. 
There's the key word there. Restore that person gently, but watch yourselves or you may also be tempted. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will feel the law of Christ. So you're supposed to deal with the person, but you're supposed to deal with the person gently. Gentleness is something I have to work on. <laughs> Gent I'm going to say that again. Gentleness is something I have to work on. And it's not necessarily because of the person. It's because I hate Satan and his little tactics and his little ploys and how he gets over on us. So gentleness is something I am personally work on. But God gave me a strategy for it, right? He said, deal with everybody as you would, because I love kids, if you were talking to a little kid. Not degrading, not, um, not condescending, but with the same compassion, Lakeisha, that you would have for a little kid. So being gentle to deal with somebody, saying, you know what? Hey, here's an issue, here's a problem, or here's the Lord something. But I'm gonna tell you something even about that. I'm very careful about what I share with people about their sins, and I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. James 5, 19 and 20 says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander if one of you should wander away from the truth, someone should bring that person back. Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. And cover a multitude of sins. So yeah, we do need to bring each other back into this, deal with this, correct someone. But when we correct or we talk to someone about restraining, we need to make sure it's something practicing. And parents, that goes for you too. You do not, because you're a parent, get to talk to your kids about how they should live and you live contrary. It ain't cool. It, it ain't cool. You don't, you, get to, you don't get to talk to them. You got to make sure you're living it. You got to make sure you're living the example before them. Don't put all these moral laws and rules on them. And you know, that's, that's how we've been damaging the body of Christ. That's how we've been damaging the body of Christ. We've been damaging the body of Christ by enforcing or talking about rules that we ain't even living by. We ain't living by. Them. And so then when someone who is not as saved or who doesn't understand their salvation comes in contact with us, right? They're not saved. They don't understand their salvation. They come in contact with us. And then we mess up. They like, what happened here? Well, we weren't living by our own rules. And then we were not going to confess and tell anybody. That's why you need to tell on yourself. <laughs> I believe in that. Tell on yourself so that can't nobody else tell on you. Let me give you my testimony and tell you where I'm struggling because can't nobody else tell me that's my struggle. And then if I tell you that and I'm dealing with that, then, man, I've put it out there. So then if something else comes out about me, it's not. Now, here is why I said to you, I am careful and I'm becoming even more careful about what I share about some somebody. The next part of scripture says six, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn around and attack you. You gotta be real cautious in sharing the word of God or sharing your truth with people who aren't re ready to receive your truth. Cause I'm telling you, they are gonna take what you said and turn around and attack you. We always feel like once we get some word in us and save, some of us have become haughty and we don't even realize it. We always feel like we gotta go to the word. We gotta tell people they true. If somebody's not ready to receive what you got in you, you are gonna be casting your pearls before swine and it's gonna tear up this relationship. It's gonna tear up the relationship. It's so much better if you live the word out. I am real careful now about what I share with people. I spend a lot of time praying. Spend a lot of time praying. Spend a lot of time praying before I assert myself and saying, Lord, does this really want you what I want you to share? And I'm talking about like, I have a three-day rule. Unless it's a crisis and an emergency, I have a three-day rule of praying over something for three days before I bring it to the person. Asking the Holy Spirit, is this what he wants me to share? Asking Lord, the Lord, is this what he wants me to say to this person? Because if I'm not, it's going to tear some up. When people, Especially if people are haughty, if people are pious, if people think they already got the answer, they already know everything, you know your people. You know people around you, whether or not they correctable. You know people around you, whether or not you can talk to them about certain things in their life. 
If you don't, you better get to know your people. You know what it's been like if you brought up certain truths to people around you and how they respond. So I get quiet. I stop talking to you. I do. And it doesn't mean I love you less. It doesn't mean whatever. I just stop talking because in your head, you, you're not ready to receive. And that's what he was saying. He said, don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't, don't get into that. Don't, don't force yourself, your belief on somebody because if they're not ready to receive it, they're going to turn around and attack you. They're going to take exactly what you said and attack you. I remember one time um, somebody was really trying to get at me and I was ignoring them. And they said, and these were their exact words. So you a Christian and you over there ignoring me. And I was getting ready to respond, but the Holy Spirit caught me and said, it doesn't matter what you say or not say right now. They're going to turn that and flip that on you. I don't, I, there's just certain things I don't tap into because I know the person doesn't want to hear it. Yeah, um, I, it's just some places I don't go, even with my friends and my friend relationships and friends that I love tremendously. It's certain places I don't go because I can tell if they approachable or not. And if they already come off like they know more than you, they don't want to hear what you got to say, even though it's your truth, even though you've lived it, even though you do it, even though you be, you got, you got to back up and you don't cast your pearls before swine. I don't, I don't, I'm getting real good and not entering into conversations with people because I keep telling myself, mind your own business. If they need you, they'll call you. They'll ask for your help. If they, they need you, if you feel comfortable and the Lord told you to share something, that's fine. But don't get involved in affairs, Lakeisha. Save and preserve the relationship. Choose wisdom to say less. You ain't got to always have something to say. And if someone calls you and they're just trying to share their heart, shut up, Lakeisha. Let them share their heart and then ask them, hey, what do you need from me in this situation? So that I can give you the very best version of what you need. Are you needing some advice? And I'm working on that all summer long. My summer goal is to become a better listener, to be more attentive to my friends and my kids and be in a position to not always offer advice, even scripture. Sometimes somebody don't need to hear scripture. When I went to talk to the young ladies, I wasn't using a whole lot of scripture. I was just giving them life examples and being their friends because that's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. Hebrews 5 and 2 says he is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray since he himself is subject to witness. Gently, 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 gently. John 14, 26, use the Holy Spirit. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Use the Holy Spirit as your resource of when not to speak and when to speak. We have been brought up in a world that teaches us to talk and run our mouths all the time. We want to seem important. We always want to have something to say. We always want to assert ourselves in areas that we don't have any business asserting ourselves. And it's costing us relationships. I'm learning how to be quiet for the sake of relationships. And what I've learned more than anything is to get my butt in the gap and pray. And it's a work in progress. Because I hate to see people suffering. I hate to see people making some of the mistakes that I made. But if I know somebody isn't going to deal in my truth, man, I ain't finna, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not having conversation with you about absolutely anything. Because the conversation that I have with you, and if you don't believe it, it don't matter. That's when it said that seed falls on stony ground. It don't matter. It don't matter. You ain't receiving what I'm saying. No way. So I don't start talking to nobody about stuff that I know about because I know they're not tapping into it, period. They're going to go do whatever. You know when somebody's going to go do whatever the heck they want to do anyway. You do. You know if that person is that has that type of attitude. So don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't get into no conflict. Don't feel like you righteously in a place. Well, I just need get in position and pray. Pray and ask the Lord to prepare a person's heart before you deliver them what you got to deliver. Don't ever del deliver anything angry. Don't ever deliver anything when you're too tired. And don't de ever deliver anything that's not your truth. Or if you deliver it and it's not your truth, talk about it from the place of, you know what? I'm struggling with this too, but this is what I found the word has said.
I'm struggling in this area too, but this is what I found the word said. So let us bring comfort to each other. Well, guess what? That's it for today. That's the word of God for today. Go put this devotion in someone's hands so somebody understands what it means. So we don't want anybody using judgy not as a sin de- defense. This is not your sin default. If somebody has been through your sin, if somebody is struggling, if somebody is really living, they do get to come to you and say, hey, baby, let me talk to you about what's going on in your life right now. It, it, ain't, it ain't cool. These are, the, these are the ramifications that come from it next, right? These are the ramifications that come from it next, but not until you're in a position that you done dealt with yourself. And that, that, that can apply to advice about so many different things, so many different, different things. Don't tell me high heels ain't good for me and you wear high heels every day. I mean, it just don't add up. I'm telling you in my head, I'm like, show me how that works in your life. Show me how that works in your life. Because then you're not talking to me out of hypocrisy or just to use words. We use too many words this day. Well, that's it. That's it for today. Um, Bringing yourself into spiritual truth. That's what we've been doing. Rightly dividing the word of God. It's kingdom, baby. It's kingdom, baby. That's what it is. It's kingdom. Living the kingdom of God out loud. God, if you get in your testament, I told y'all we're going to start breaking up this red letter. If you get in this word, start reading the red letters, and in the right context, you'll learn to live according to kingdom currency and real spiritual truths, and not according to what religion has taught us and what we thought to be truths all this time, and it's not our truth. And we learn to love at a different capacity in a different way so that we walk into the fullness of what God has called us to be. I was looking for a confession for y'all today. I guess I'll just pray over you. So, Father, we thank you for our time in the word. We thank you for showing us how to rightly divide the word of God. Lord God, that you didn't say we couldn't judge, but we should only judge when it's our truth, Lord God, when it's what we're living by. Make us cognizant. Hmm of the plastic places in our lives, the the places that are false, the places that are extended and not rooted in you. Let us become cognizant. Let us become conscious of what it's like to really live in spiritual truths. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. Bless the people today. I cover them in the blood of Jesus that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I thank you that as they go forth, that it is well with them today, well in their household, well in their children, well in their finances, Lord God, well in their health. Let it be well with them today. We thank you, Lord God, for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, believe God for big things today. Believe believe God for big things today. Your prayers are effective. Even when you're dealing with people, your prayers are effective. So believe God for big things today. Um, I see, oh, this Saturday, June 30th, I, there's an event um, going on. I'm going to post the flyer again on my page today. Make sure you get your young ladies registered. It is available for young ladies 12 to 18. I'm speaking in the latter part of the day. Also, I'm going to share another flyer on your page. My church is having a HELPS conference. If you work anywhere in the ministry of HELPS and your church or you, it's free. And you need just a little added extra to make sure you're serving with a servant's heart then this help conference is for you. I love y'all. I love you so much. Now go be loved today. And that's not something I'm telling you to do that I don't do. Go be loved today. Work on your love walk. Press into love. I'll see you back here in the morning at 5 a.m. Love, peace, and blessings.